one after one, by the star dogged moon, too quick for grown aside, each turned his face with a ghastly pain, and cursed me with his eye. Four times, fifty living men, and I heard nor sigh nor groan, with heavy thump, a lifeless lump, they dropped down, one by one. The souls did from their bodies fly, they fled to bliss or woe, and every soul it passed me by, like the whiz of my crossbow. Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven, Samuel Taylor Coleridge's Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, and T.S. Eliot's The Hollow Men are each in their own way epic poems, but together they are synergistically bind together like three strands of fiber in a rope. Poetry Reads. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of somebody gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this, and nothing more. The wedding guest sat on a stone, he could not choose but hear, and thus spake on that ancient man, the bright-eyed mariner. Ah, distinctly, I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. We are the hollow men, we are the stuffed men, leaning together, headpiece filled with straw. Alas! Our dry voices, when we whisper together, are quiet and meaningless, as wind in dry grass, or rat beat over broken glass, in our dry cell. The sun came up upon the left, and the sea came he, and he showed bright, and on the right went down into the sea, higher and higher every day, till over the mast at noon, the wedding guest here beat his breast. For he heard the loud bassoon. This is the dead land, this is the cat's land. Here the stone images are raised. Here they receive the supplication of a dead man's hand under the twinkle of a fading star. And now there came both mist and snow, and it grew wondrous cold, and ice, mast high, came floating by, as green as emerald. And through the drifts the snowy cliffs did send a decimal sheen. Nor shapes of men, nor beasts we can, the ice was all between. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, Here we go around the prickly pear, the prickly pear, here we go around the prickly pear, at five o'clock in the morning. The ice was here, the ice was there, the ice was all around. Darkness, and there, nothing more. Deep into the darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, and the only word there spoken was the whispered words, We are the hollow men, the hollow men, the hollow men. Quote the raven, nevermore. At length did cross the albatross, through the fog it came, it ate the food its near had it eat, and around and around it flew, in mist or cloud, on mast or shroud, it perched for vespers nine. God save thee, ancient mariner, from the fiends that plagued thee thus, why looketh thou so with my crossbow, I shot the albatross. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl. To hear discourse so plainly, through its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore, for we cannot help but agree that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door. Sightless, unless they appear, reappear, as the perpetual star of death's twinkling kingdom. One after one, by the star darkened moon, too quick for grown aside. Each turned his face with a ghastly pain, and cursed me with his eye. Four times, fifty living men, and I heard nor sigh nor groan, 
with heavy thump, a lifeless lump, they dropped down one by one. The souls dead from their bodies fly, they fled to bliss or woe, and every soul, it passed me by, like the whiz of my crossbow. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore, meant in croaking. This is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining on the cushion's velvet lining, that lamp light beloaded o'er, but whose velvet violet lining with lamp light glowing o'er, cheetah press, ah, nevermore. How long in the same fit I lay, I have not to declare, but ere my living life returned, I heard it in my soul, discerned two voices in the air. Quote the raven, nevermore. Quote the raven, nevermore. Quote the raven, nevermore. Nevermore, nevermore, nevermore. The prickly pear, the prickly pear, the prickly pear. Here we go around the prickly pear. Prophet, I said, think of evil. Prophet still, a bird of devil. Whether tempter is sent, or whatever tempest tossed thee ashore. Desolate, yet all undaunted, on this desolate land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted. Tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quote the raven, nevermore. The mariner, whose eye is bright, whose beard with age is hoar, when like on that hath been stunned, and is of sense forlorn, a saddler and a wise man, he rose. Prophet, I said, think of evil, prophet still, a bird or devil, by the heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell his soul, and my soul, from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor, shall be lifted. Nevermore, nevermore, nevermore. Here we go around the prickly pear, the prickly pear, the prickly pear, the prickly pear. This is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends. The way the world ends. Not with a bang.